Hello there friends, what's going on? I'm Bryn, I'm the Game Survivor, and today is Friday, which means it's time for another episode of Fight Night, the series where I jump onto my favourite Red Orchestra 2 and Rising Storm server, play some games with the boys and bring you guys some commentary, tutorials, and some deeper discussion, which is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be talking about the future of the Red Orchestra series, specifically Red Orchestra 3. Now, don't worry, Red Orchestra 3 hasn't been announced, there's still a lot of content coming for Red Orchestra 2. Uh, the devs are really working really hard to uh, keep the game in really good condition with content patches and stability patches, which is absolutely fantastic. But eventually that content is going to run out and the fans are really going to want some more content, uh, which means that the devs are very, very likely to release a Red Orchestra 3 in the near future. I'm talking maybe one or two years from now. We're not going to see it in the immediate future, but we're going to see one eventually. And in this video, I'm going to break down what the community is speculating is going to be in uh, Red Orchestra 3, what I personally want to see in Red Orchestra 3, and what we probably will and won't see based on uh, what we've heard and what we can see in the game in its current state. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, don't forget to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more Red Orchestra 2 and Rising Storm videos. But let's get right into it. I hope you guys enjoy. Now, when I was researching for this video, I typed in Red Orchestra 3 discussion into Google, and one of the first discussions that came up, the original poster said, and I quote, Red Orchestra 3 should be a massively multiplayer shooter with an entire map of Stalingrad and hundreds of players in it. Uh, now, as awesome as that sounds, we've already got games that do that kind of thing. We've got World War II Online, admittedly, you know, that's going downhill at the moment. Uh, but we've also got Heroes and Generals, which is on the rise. It's got an entire map of Europe. Uh, we don't play Red Orchestra for the campaign mode. <laughs> Some of you might not even know that there is a campaign mode. Yes, there is a campaign mode, but not many people play it because it's kind of redundant. It's kind of tacked onto the end. Uh, it's not played that often because not many people enjoy it. Uh, we don't play Red Orchestra 2 for a persistent map. We play it for big maps, obviously, but we don't play it for a persistent game world that, you know, is changing all the time, blah, 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 blah. N not, not something like Planet Side 2. Admittedly, it would be fantastic to have a Planet Side 2 World War 2 game. Uh, it shouldn't be something that is represented in the uh, Red Orchestra franchise. I personally wouldn't want to see that. So what do I actually want to see in Red Orchestra 3? Okay, well I want to see a continuation of the style of gameplay that we have at the moment. Uh, the style of matches, uh, infantry based combat, combat uh, you know, small amounts of vehicles that, uh, that rely on infantry to keep them alive, for instance, <laughs> that kind of thing. You know, this isn't Battlefield, this is Red Orchestra. It's a massive emphasis on infantry based combat and I really like that style of gameplay. That's why I play Red Orchestra. You have to be a good shot with your rifle in this game. It doesn't matter if you've got you know, such as in Battlefield, if you've got all the unlocks, if you've got all the perks, etc. You know, you actually do have to be a really good shot with a Mosin to do well in this game. And I really like that. I just want to see it on a, on a larger scale. Now, a lot of the discussion that I've read up on online uh, says that people in the community want to see 128 player uh, get maps. And that would be really cool. Uh, I would personally like to see that. Obviously, hardware restrictions mean that that's not possible at the moment. If you jump onto a Red Orchestra server, uh, a 64-man server, that's full. Uh, you know, my ping, for instance, that sits at a comfortable 30 or 40 in Battlefield, jumps up sometimes to 250, sometimes even 300 in spikes. Uh, often it sits around about 70 or 80. And that's because, you know, the hardware, the etc. isn't optimized particularly well. And so Tripwire would really, really have to lift their game in that department, uh, make sure the net code is really, really solid. It's possible, but it would be extremely difficult to do. Now, obviously, if we're going to have 128 players on one server, we're going to have to make bigger maps to accommodate those players. But I also would like to see sort of a slower paced style of game mode in the game. Now, World War II battles, obviously, you know, the battle for Stalingrad wasn't over in a day. <laughs> a lot of the battles that we see in Red Orchestra 2, you know, the time limit's capped to 20 minutes or whatever. And there's been some discussion on the um, Australian New Zealand forums about having a, a fight night every now and then uh, that w in, in which we extend the time period to go over the course of, you know, an hour or two, or even longer than that, maybe five or six hours. And I would personally like to see a game mode in the game uh, that isn't a you know persistent map, not the kind of Planet Side Two thing that I was talking about before, but just a longer battle uh, with a, you know a lot more consequence for death, so, such as you know the death counter, uh, the respawn counter is actually on like a minute or a minute and a half. Obviously, that's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Obviously, we would still have to have the arcade and realism modes that we have in the game at the moment, but this could be like a realism plus game mode or something in which um, there's a lot more consequence for death. Uh, to capture points requires a huge amount of coordination uh, with your team. 
uh, something of the kind of thing that you see in Project Reality, for instance. Uh, I don't play a lot of Project Reality because there's not a lot of um, <coughs> Australian servers out there, um, and I don't like playing with high ping. <laughs> um, but something along the lines of Project Reality would be absolutely awesome, uh, but under uh, sort of the Red Orchestra 2 franchise. I'd really like to see that in the next Red Orchestra game. Now that's what I want to see in the game, that's a little bit of a discussion about what the community wants to see in the game, but what can we actually expect to see in Red Orchestra 3? Well, since it hasn't been announced or anything, we haven't got any screens, we haven't got any gameplay, we haven't even had any kind of announcement or anything, because it's, you know, it's not even in the works as far as we know. Um, the Tripwire are very much still working on Red Orchestra 2 and Rising Storm, which is awesome, bringing out new content for that. Um, we don't have any idea about what the game is actually going to be about. Um, but we, what we can expect is a really solid engine. Tripwire are really, you know, thorough developers. They always make their engines really nice and solid. Uh, we can expect a pretty decent netcode. We can also expect a very good community following and a very tight, uh, if, you know, small, fan base to the game. I think we can probably also expect, though, quite a lot more people migrating from Call of Duty and Battlefield. Now, obviously, Call, and Ju Call of Duty and Battlefield have been in the decline uh, in their past couple of releases. You know, you can hate me as much as you like <laughs> for saying that, but the truth is that Call of Duty Ghosts was kind of a flop. Battlefield 4, the release of that game, was just appalling. Um, there's already a little bit of hype for Battlefield Hardline, but not nearly as much as there was for Battlefield 4, because people are finally starting to wisen up to the fact that EA aren't very good at releasing stable, uh, stable releases of their games. Um, you know, I'm happy to be surprised, pleasantly surprised by a really good release of Battlefield Hardline, but the truth remains that people are going to be steering clear of it uh, when it's released, until they, you know, EA can prove that it's a good game. And so they're probably going to be looking at Red Orchestra as a good alternative. So if R Tripwire Interactive can bring out Red Orchestra 3 in the near future, in the next year or so, before the release of, say, Battlefront, for instance, we can expect to see a lot of new players to the game. And obviously, you know, they're going to be annoying noobs for the first few t uh, times that we play with them. But after a couple of months, they're going to really start to contribute well to the community because the Battlefield community is a really, you know, they're really great people, and I think they would be a very valuable addition to uh, the Red Orchestra community. So that's it from me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is entirely speculation <laughs> and entirely opinion, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like down below, and if you want to see more Fight Night videos, I release them every Friday or Saturday, um, and if you want to play with me, uh, let me know. Hit me, hit me up, uh, send me a message, and I'll send you guys the server link if you want to play some Red Orchestra and Rising Storm with me. Don't forget to hit like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. See you later.